It was right. like something out of a farcical French movie. All right. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Very, very much. To conversation. I'm very happy on this uh, Tuesday to we re welcome to the set uh, a dear friend of mine who's in town, and that's Gilad Atzman. And Gilad, it's so good to see you here on the eighth of uh, May. And we here, I think, just the Third World War may have just started or something. But we yeah, maybe it, it might be something to talk about, you know, absolutely. Uh, you know, and everything. But it's so good to see you, and welcome to the set as always. Always so happy to be with you. How about that? You just took it off your, t to your tablet or something there. That uh, the thing, uh, the it may be that Mr. Trump or whatever is going to put us into. Yeah, a we just learned that uh, Trump decided to at this moment, withdraw. And yeah, gentlemen, real time. From, yeah. uh, but uh, we expected it. Uh, yeah, true. Today, yeah. and uh, it looks as if the Israelis are uh, prepared for a war, uh, which means that. They're probably ready to attack. Um, it doesn't look uh, too good, but um, for those who are interested in this conflict, it is uh, quite clear for more than three or four decades that uh, Israel is probably the biggest threat to world peace. Yeah, well, boy, that's really something because you uh, you're familiar with Israel. Your family roots are in <laughs> Israel. In fact, some yep. of the Likud is there in your family root and background. Yeah, it's true. I think, well, <laughs> why don't you share a little bit of your own? Bec and um, you've got the book. Don't forget, we've talked to him a number of times. Um, this is Being in Time, and that was fo that was uh, preceded by uh, The Wandering Who. And right. There's a couple of books that have to do with uh, his uh, undearing love for the right-wing elements of <laughs> the country of Israel, the country of his birth. He's just completely converted to them <laughs> in total uh, uh, lo loyalty, right? Uh, uh, I'm not even sure about uh, you could that. Tell them. Yeah, it, it is true that they have uh, some roots in Israeli uh, right-wing or right-wing Zionists. But I was uh, trying to be funny. I, I'm, I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Go I'm ahead. Not, I'm Go not. Ahead. I'm yeah. not. It's, it's, mm. it's something that uh, mm. I'm, I'm not really proud about, but... Uh, the more I look into it, the more it becomes clear to me that um, it may as well be possible that right-wing Zionists such as Jabotinsky, yeah, yeah, yeah. the name ri ring yeah, a bell, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. was probably more genuine mm. than the labor Zionist alternative yeah. that was actually leading the, the Zionist movement until 77. And why do I say it? Because it is clear to us nowadays, I mean, for me, it's clear for, the, for, uh, for quite a time, mm -hmm. that uh, Jabotinsky mm -hmm. wanted to see Jewish state mm -hmm. in Palestine, but it was very important for him that the Arabs will be... Um, respected, that will be treated with dignity, mm -hmm. and um, he says it will work as long as we manage to sustain Jewish majority. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but it was yeah. very important for him that uh, the language mm -hmm. of the Jewish state will be, would be, I would say, Hebrew and Arabic, that every street name will be in both languages, and so on and so on. Um, it was labor Zionism that ethnically cleansed Palestine, that kept the Palestinians who decided to cling to their land uh, under um, a military uh, order. Mm -hmm. It was actually labor Zionism that uh, committed the most uh, disgusting atrocities to the Palestinians. There have been many. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, and, and all of that is coming now to light mm -hmm. because next week is 70 years for the Nakba. Is that really true? And yeah, absolutely. And, and this is why track, we yeah. see yeah. all those developments in Gaza in the last few weeks. We see Palestinians once again 
protesting for the right of return. Mm -hmm. When we look at the Palestinian mm -hmm. cause, mm -hmm. it is very easy to identify what is the Palestinian plight. We are talking about people who were ethnically cleansed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, Bombed regularly. And therefore, the Palestinian cause is can be summarized in one sentence, the right of return. Mm -hmm. The right of return puts in context Israeli racism, the historical context of this conflict, the conflict that starts with uh, ethnic cleansing. And it is very interesting because in the last two and a half decades, it seemed to some of us as if the right of return was pushed aside. We saw um, um, a growing domination yeah. of uh, Jewish solidarity organizations mm -hmm. like uh, JVP, for instance, and IJAN, and Jewish socialists, a lot of bodies. And they managed quite successfully to, to deviate from the right of return into many other campaign-oriented uh, maneuvers. To the first time was, for instance, end of occupation. Mm. End of occupation sounds great. However, end of occupation mm. is all about legitimacy of the Jewish state uh -huh. within different borders. Yeah. All right, pre-67. Pre then they start to talk about colonialism. Colonialism is a very misleading uh, term mm. because Israel is not a colonial project. Zionism is not a colonial project. It is a very unique project with no president in history, in human history. People come to a place after 2,000 years and tell the indigenous, listen, you have to move. We've been there, uh, we've been there, we've been here, we've been here before. When? 2,000 years ago. According to this idea, every Italian, contemporary Italian, can take every piece of land in Europe. It'd be really confusing on a large scale. <laughs> it can, you know, <laughs> not, like by the way, <laughs> by the way, by the way, yeah. we have quite a lot of Italian uh, restaurants all over. Right, so maybe yeah. it's not such a bad idea. You know, it's better to have more uh, Italian restaurants than, than a Jewish delicatessen. Mm. But, <laughs> um, but uh, I think that, uh, uh, again, you know, colonialism uh, was a, uh, a misleading concept. Apartheid. Israel is not apartheid. It is far yeah. worse than apartheid. Worse, Apart than, apart worse than apartheid. Ab ab absolutely. And this is something that uh, South, uh, South African uh, activists uh, like Desmond Tutu and yeah, Mandela yeah, yeah, confirmed yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because apartheid is a racist system of exploitation. Yeah, uh, right. The Israeli pro project is an ethnic uh, cleansing project. They want the Palestinians explo gone. Of a, oh, I see. All right. Okay, right. So, you're, so, yeah, so, you're not so, trying to exploit. So, yeah, the, okay. it, so yeah. the Israeli project is, to a certain extent, an Hitlerian project. For Jewish activists, this was too devastating to admit. So we were pushed into this avenue of apartheid colonialism. We tried. We tried, we saw, I, I, I'd say we, I, I wasn't part of it. Mm -hmm. We saw some elements within the solidarity movement trying to reframe the conflict within terminology that is uh, clear to them and puts the Israeli regime and the Israeli society, the Jewish state, in a slightly better light. And I'm very happy to see that at least the Gazans are now emancipated. They say, this is our land, we want to go back. This is the true meaning of the Palestinian cause, and this is something that I totally support. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. part of my family, you know, um, yeah, they immigrated, yeah. immigrated uh, to, to, uh, to Palestine, in the 30s, the, the other far part of my family was there a long time before. Mm. Um, based on the idea, based on the Zionist idea, so I thought if my grandfather could claim that land based on the fantasy of a historical right, mm -hmm. 
So definitely, refugees were living in camps, in open-air prisons like Gaza, all those years have the absolute right to return to their land. Uh, uh, uh. This is, uh, you know, so uh, you ask a question and we already... <laughs> <laughs> so you were there and then you've, uh, you've, uh, you've taken up residence in uh, Britain now. Huh? I live in Britain yeah. for uh, 25 years and it's quite devastating for me to admit that... Uh, it's because of your <sighs> disassociation with the political stance of the, the I state of Israel? I understood at a certain... Political... Um, I understood at a certain stage. It is very interesting because mm. I'm uh, really writing a, mm. a, a book about it now. Mm. Where I try to understand mm. when, when is it exactly that Israel stopped being Israel and became a Jewish state. When? Well, uh, uh, I will elaborate on it in a second. Okay. To start with, let's try to understand yeah. the question. Yeah. Zionism was initially an acknowledgement that something is not right about Jewish culture, about Jewish diaspora culture. Well, about the fact that Jews are not productive people. They, if you read some of the early Zionists, you, th you may as well think that this, these texts were written by, uh, by Nazis. Uh, they spoke about the parasitic nature of the Jews. Um, Bochov uh, spoke about the idea that each society looks, and most society looks like a pyramid. You have a lot of working class, middle class, and very few bourgeoisie at the top. Mm -hmm. He said Jewish society is basically an upside pyramid. Maybe we have one working class guy, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of bunkers on the, mm -hmm. on the top. He said, the early Zionists, that this is very embarrassing, but it is due to the fact the Jews don't have a land said, once we go back to our promised land, mm. this will change. And it changed. It changed. Um, they went to Palestine. The doctors became farmers. Scientists became carpenters. And it lasts about two weeks. And then they found out that the Palestinians were slightly cheaper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this was the end. This was probably the end. Uh, but uh, to be honest, to be honest, uh, to I'm, I'm kind of slightly cynical here. Uh, there was, there were a lot of different debates in the early days of Zionism about the idea whether the Jewish immigrants can use labor, Palestinian labor, and so on and so on. However, the whole idea that led Zionism was driven by the rejection of the Jew and Jewishness. I'll tell you some things that people don't know. In 67, the military elite, Rabin, was the chief of staff. Yeah. His commanders used to refer to the government as the Jews. That's interesting. They yeah. called them the Jews. Yeah. We were the is we Rabin, yeah. We were the Israelis. They were the Jews. Mm. And this is something that I only learned recently. Uh, and when I started to read some protocols, I could see it. They looked down on the Jews. This changed completely. I believe <coughs> after '67. <coughs> Following the incredible victory of, uh, in 67, many Israelis started to believe that the transformation has completed. Mm -hmm. On the one end, and on the other end, there were many new communities of Jews who immigrated to Israel in the 50s and in the 60s from Arab countries, from some East European countries, from the Balkan, and they couldn't integrate into this Israeli narrative. And then in the early 70s, we start 
to see a new narrative coming up and this is the narrative of what really unites us is Jewishness. And this is the point where Israel becomes the Jewish state. Mm -hmm. This is the point where Israelis start to be tormented by the Holocaust because for the earlier generations, mm -hmm. the Holocaust was a point of shame. They didn't want to look into it. Why would it be a point of shame? Except? Because, because this, for, for, for my parents... It was a horrendous event. For, Horrible. I don't, I yeah. don't de debate it. Yeah. I don't debate yeah. it. For my parents' mm. generation, yeah. the Holocaust, and a lot, of, a lot was written about it, mm. for my parents' generation, the Holocaust yeah. was... Go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah. There's just a point. Yeah. Yeah. For the generations of first Israelis, the Holocaust was a clear evidence of the Jews being parasitic, rejected, abnormal. Tom Segev wrote a, 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 a quite an important book about the seventh million. Mm -hmm. Those who survived the Holocaust, they come to Israel and they are treated badly. There are a lot of stories about my parents' generations of parents that didn't allow their kids to bring home kids of Holocaust, or Holocaust young Holocaust mm. survivors. I, I, okay. I, it, is, it is an embarrassing story, but uh, I, I'm really, I really don't well, make well, it Yeah, what's up. the dynamic in all of that? I can't quite get a hold of because it. Because the Israelis, the Israelis saw themselves as a new breed, as proud people, people who can defend themselves as opposed to the Jews in the diaspora who that went to weak. the lamp. To the quietly to the, to the lamb to the slaughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is yeah. this is very important. Now, one of my most interesting insights, and it is an insight, so mm. I cannot really prove it. Mm. I just offer <laughs> no, no, a yeah. reading of the situation, yeah, which is what philosophers come up do. That way, yeah. One of the things yeah. that we don't understand, we just spoke about it ten minutes ago is the fact that it was the labor Zionists, the people who were supposed to be the most humanly driven Jews were those who actually perpetrated the Nakba, mm -hmm. this huge ethnic cleansing of yeah. Palestinians, which is very strange because it is not clear whether they were driven by racist hatred to the indigenous people of the land. What I understand now, the possibility that uh, regardless of the political uh, motivation that was led by, as we understand it, Ben-Gurion and so yeah, on yeah. and so on, yeah. the reasons behind this ethnic cleansing was this idea of new Israeli the one who is assertive, who is fighting, who is expelling. They actually adopted, adopted... Real the, 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 the More than real the real politics, they adopted Power. the Nazi, yeah. the German, the Third Reich military tactics. And I tell you it's something... Really ironic. Really it's, ironic. it's really ironic the because when you yeah. look, when you yeah. look at the, I the IDF military spread. doctrine in 67. Yeah. This yeah. is Blitzkrieg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Blitzkrieg. Now, well, they may have, they may have come around to realpolitik, and uh, in politics, whoever's got the gun, they write the laws. And, and it's been like that for a very long time. And it is very planet. possible, it is very yeah. possible that also in 67, Are we ever in 67, yeah. in 67, the Israelis had gained, had managed to gain so much land in quite a brilliant military maneuvering because they were driven by this relentless need to remove themselves from Jewish history and bring a new kind of Israeli well, assertive, assertive 
Now, for me, Jew, Israeli or Jewish? Jewish this is or now we come to the, now we come to yeah. we come to the real point. Yeah. I was raised with this right in Israeli, the, uh, you know. From and your family was right in the core of all a lot of these things going I, on. I, I guess like so. Like the like, like table, yeah, you could have yeah. discussions. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess so. Mm -hmm. I was raised with this. Israeli, this is something that I understand now, okay. you know, 20 okay. 25 years after okay, I right. realized, it's important uh, after, I, after I left, uh, left uh, yeah, Israel. Yeah, left Israel for Britain, yeah. Yeah. At a certain stage, Israel went into that transformation. It became the Jewish state. So I say that it started in the early 70s after 67, the Yom Kippur War was a, you know, 73 war was a big shock for Israel. Four years later, labor Zionism pretty much collapse, mm. and Begin, Menachem Begin becomes the prime minister. The right wing basically take over, and they, they're basically leading this country since then. There is not much left out of, out of, out of uh, not much left out of Israeli left. It's a leftover. And so at they, a certain they stage... They, re they represent the... Uh, in real politic terms, the uh, the establishment de jure in the country of Israel now is uh, practicing the statesmanship of a good deal of human history based upon just real politic. Whoever's got the gun rules, and whoever's got the power rules. It's a without things like um, systems of. Uh, Democracy or something like that. We can talk about we can talk about uh, about Israeli politics in a second, I guess. Well, I was thinking, um, uh, you know, to be to be the winner, not the loser. In a yeah, way. yeah. I I, th I think I I, I think I think that when I look at Israeli Israeli politics, to a certain extent, they are all losers oh, because wow. they don't have prospect of future. As, as as we know, just as as we were kind of m marching into this uh, into this show, I just there, re there, read news that. Are there lessons out of this for the world or for the we world? Will, we, yeah. I, I, I will address it in a second, but I want uh, you ask me a, a question that is very important for me, whether I'm an Israeli or a Jew. So to start with, I'm not an Israeli. I'm not a Jew for many years, but but I realized twenty five years after leaving Israel. Yeah that I was quite comfortable with the idea of being an Israeli. With the idea of being an Israeli and not being a Jew. No. With the idea of being extremely productive and to believe in work and labor and equality. What I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the image, the symbolic yeah. identifier, what Israeli means. I don't say that this is what Israel has ever been. But this yeah, is, and these ideas radi radiate throughout the you whole human condition. I grew yeah. up with yeah. these pictures, yeah. with these yeah. photos yeah. of Israeli paratroopers giving water yeah, to, right, to, right. to 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 uh, to uh, uh, Egyptian um, soldiers you know in the desert it took me many more years I was four years old obviously mm -hmm. at the time of 67 it took yeah. me many more years to understand that this desert was a slaughterhouse yeah. for thousands of Palestinians that my dad told me that you could smell that you could smell the, the corpses in the cockpit what a horror all right what a horror. Yeah. Yeah. all right yeah. so yeah. so so we it was very important history. it was very important history. so history is a nightmare James I agree I agree so what I understand now is that I had to leave Israel in the yeah. 90s yeah. Yeah. because Israel became a Jewish state, and I didn't want to be a Jew. A Jewish state and a winner state. Uh, whether it is winner, Israel, winner Israel, is, yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, part of being a Jew it, is to believe in chosenness. It can be heady stuff. Yeah, Not, yeah well, yeah. you're chosen, and so you're what a winner. What is devastating for me, to what is devastating for me, is that I moved to Britain. Yeah, I know. And move, Britain was a great place, yeah. and still British people are incredible people. Uh, but I'm I'm more. I I, I, yeah. I know about you. I know. Sorry. Yeah. It's, no. No. Don't be. Mm. But but devastatingly enough, and the same thing is happening 
here in America and in France. Okay, now you're getting. Yeah, yeah is that Israel, I, sorry, Britain, yeah. and I would say America mm. and France are now more Jewish than Israel. Oh, really? Okay. All yeah, right? Yeah. There, there was a story that came out um, in The Guardian, and it's filtering very, very slowly uh -huh. into, uh, for instance, the uh, American press about the fact it was in the on the guardian that i say the fact I, I i didn't see the fact but this is what reported by the the guardian that your president um hired an israeli company in may last may mm -hmm. uh, in order and he basically hired them to dig dirt on Obama's advisors who were dealing with the Iran nuclear agreement. Now, ah, that's uh, yeah, that's now, right up for grabs now. Now, 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 now yeah. I, 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 so I saw it in, yeah. I read it yeah, in, yeah, on yeah. the Guardian, mm -hmm. which is surprising for me because the Guardian is also not kind of a trustworthy uh, outlet anymore. We call it the Guardian of Jude Judea. Uh, but maybe they <laughs> they were willing to do it because it's it was Trump whom they don't like. I land, I I land in New York, and the story is not out. It takes another twelve hours, and then with the New Yorker reported yesterday that that company from that today, is ready. You're talking no, about no, the New Yorker then, yesterday yeah, yeah. reported yesterday that this company mm -hmm. is actually the same company that was hired by Harvey Weinstein yeah. to harass the movie uh, the guy. Yeah, the movie guy, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the um, predator, crazy. sex yeah. predator, yeah. to harass uh, some of his uh, victims. And I thought to myself, you know, if this is not treason, you know, an American president hire a foreign company to harass, to dig dirt on American officials, this is beyond anything. Is it so beyond politics, really? Or has it got to that <laughs> point? Or because um, this sort of thing well, goes on. And the, like the title, the title, the, the title of my yeah. book yeah. is "Being in Time: yeah. a, a Post Political book. Manifesto." Okay, very nice. We are. Okay. You, okay. you ask. This is politics. Post -political. We are. Okay. We are. Well. We are. We are living in a post political universe. And as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, and I'm saying it for many years, we are all Palestinians. The battle in Palestine, in Gaza border, yeah. is not a remote event. We are it's all Palestinians. Of the whole human we are all Palestinians. Yeah. We are all Palestinians. Is that what you're saying? It's indicative of the whole. Exactly. Whole it's world just a symbolic. Yeah. It's a symbolic uh -huh. uh, manifestation uh, of the situation. Uh, and why? Yeah. Because, like the Palestinians, yeah. we are not allowed to utter the name of our oppressors. Now, a week ago, I spoke with. Uh, on a radio show yeah. uh, with uh, this, a survivor of uh, USS Liberty. Do you remember USS Liberty, the, the, the American? I do, but I can't place All it. All right, so in I 1967, yeah. there was um, a Navy uh, intelligence Navy vessel yeah, right. that was sunk by, it, uh, it, wasn't, it didn't, it didn't uh, sink, but it, uh, there was an attempt to, uh, by the Israelis to sink an American uh, a Navy vessel, uh, many um, sailors died. Many there were many intelligence uh, NSA right, yeah. um, officers on 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 the on the boat, and they were they couldn't speak about it. Those who survived were under gag order for thirty five years. I think that the gag order is still there, but after thirty five years, I think in two thousand two. The story broke, broke out, and this is exactly the meaning of Jewish power. Jewish power is the power to silence, to silence any criticism of Jewish power, and this is a uh, this is a, a very forceful power that dismantles our ability 
to amend the situation to correct the world in which we are living. Yeah, but hasn't it been that way for many, many instances of overweening uh, authoritarian power within many kind of situations throughout the history of the world? In fact, uh, the history of the world is very much a matter of a few people in a castle on top of the hill while everyone's wallowing around in the mud with no ability to a do anything but to accept the fact that there are two, there are classes, there's winners and losers, and so <laughs> they are losers to the winners. So and let's talk. That's let's real politic. Okay. Uh, that is held okay. and is still operative in other parts of the world. Other than so Israel. let's talk about the history of the world. Yeah. Okay. That's and let's and yeah. let's talk. Let's take um, uh, uh, Leo Strauss um, dichotomy between Athens and Jerusalem. Leo Strauss believed that there was this kind of a dialectic conflict between Athens, the birthplace of philosophy, yeah. of reason, the place where we think things through, yeah. the birthplace of science, and Jerusalem, the authoritarian birthplace of revelation. Do that, do that, do that, Talmud, Ten Commandments, and don't do that and that and that. Uh, well, okay. So, if this is the case, the universe in which we are living doesn't even recognize our Athenian origin. We forgot what it means to think things through. We are. Now we have managed to drift away from truthfulness and the seeking of truthfulness. And you can see it all the time. Do you think on a world wide scale you're thinking this way, or you think of a certain I think, American? I think, uh, no, no, I'm talking about the West. I'm talking, the talking, about, okay, I'm yeah. talking about. I'm talking about the West. I'm talking yeah. about Britain, mm -hmm. France, the United States, mm -hmm. certainly. And the next thing that you you do when once you start to analyze a uh, political maneuvering. Yeah and foreign affairs um, um, strategies, you see it immediately. For instance, just three weeks ago, we saw Britain, America, and the United States attacking Syria with cruise missiles yeah, 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 yeah. based on an alleged chemical attack that has never been verified, yeah. and I, like many m other people, believe that never happened. Yeah, that well could be. Yeah, that's you know, not the first time you know, has happened. It's not the first time. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, uh, yeah. The, when uh, when Colin Powell stood up uh, in front of the United that's Nations right. with the that's WMD. Right. That's right. And this is yeah. exactly where we start to acknowledge that we are removed from Alicia. From yeah. the idea of truthfulness, I right. hope that I pronounce it correctly. Uh, in, that's uh, a, that's in, a in larger Greek. proposition in terms of the human condition written in large terms. And I it's very would argue, yeah. mm -hmm. and this is consent consistent mm. with my me being an Israeli, yeah. I'm talking in metaphorical terms, yeah. that in order to save this world, we must defeat Jerusalem in our midst. Now, Jerusalem for me is not Jews, and Athens is not Goim. Jerusalem is that authoritarian nature. There's been a lot of that in the history of the there world. There is a lot of it Virtually in America it. now. Yeah. Well, Political okay. correctness yeah, yeah. is a Jerusalem Jerusalemite okay. tendency. Yeah. Identity but politics. Power, power, power rules, rules um, is not anything new. In fact, it's characteristic of the whole human condition. One could. By say. the way, whoever's I'm not got the gun wins, and they set the rules, and uh, it's realpolitik again. Uh, fine. That most fine politicians but have to uh, take very seriously into account where's the power. What's forcefulness possible. Yeah. and power. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean Jerusalem. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So it can be forceful 
and uh, or be even authoritarian, or even authoritarian, yeah. and still bonded with the notion of truthfulness and authenticity. And if you, I like you those last two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and know, those, and those things are still blowing in the wind. I cannot think. I cannot stuff. think yeah. of any generation yeah. within Western thought that has been less authentic mm -hmm. than our generation, than our youngsters that are born into a world with no prospect of future. When we were young, yeah, yeah. I'm younger than you, but yeah. when you were young and I was young, you said, all right, we'll do something, but if it doesn't work, we'll go to work in a factory. Well, yeah, okay. All yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, mm. this mm -mm. option is not available Follow for... the yellow brick road. Yes, <laughs> that kind of thing. All right. Okay, and now, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and this is... This is, uh, this is uh, uh, a devastating uh, development. More than that, yeah. the entire ethos uh -huh. of identity politics, uh -huh, yeah. when you start to talk as a, mm, yeah, right, right, as a, right, right. to speak as, mm. a, as a, means that you are not yourself. If I, Gillard, mm. start to talk as a saxophonist, mm -hmm. for instance. As a what? As a saxophonist, as you know. What is uh, oh, as saxophone? A oh, uh, yeah, yeah, in America it's a but saxophonist. You can do that, all yeah. right. Yeah. I tell you, yeah. I've heard you. I've heard you. I've heard you. Yeah. If I start to talk tone. as a saxophonist, yeah. 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 I allow a mediator to interfere you mean the between, my s no, between no. myself and, and my identity. Your identity. If I start to speak as a gay, I'm not, not between, I'm not gay. Not between yourself and and the clarinet player. No. No. That's sometimes uh, exactly. I would have to st when I start to play, I would have to say as a saxophonist, should I play that phrase of Charlie Parker or maybe this lick from John John Coltrane? This you is a non authentic <laughs> way you, you of thinking. You picked a couple of authentics there. Exactly. Yeah, I know that. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. you know why they were mm. authentic? Well, I'm not. You know why jazz right. musicians were authentic? No. Because yeah. they took so much drugs that their consciousness, the super ego, mm. the policeman mm -hmm. died out. And this is why this music is so great. Now, we are it police from ever. We are now police from every possible yeah. direction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. All right. Yeah. We are poli we are police by tyranny of correctness, by identitarian fascists mm. who call themselves anti-fascists mm. and do very little except exploring what fascism is all about. Mm. And this is this is this is very devastating. And on top of all of that. Yeah. We are policed mm -hmm. by Mr. Zuckerberg robots yeah, yeah. that are sensitive to all those idiotic ideas. Yeah. New, New this, York, yeah. this will have to change. Yeah. So what are you? Let me ask you a question. Are you optimistic, pessimistic well, I, uh, for the human prospect, let's say? We now have a world that we've come into, which I don't know if the record is there or if it's clear. But finally, after, what, 200,000 years of our existence as a species, we have extended capability of our consciousness in what are called weapon systems that have become, in their, le in their capability, le species lethal. It's a new kind of reality that's emerging. Are we coming to the end of uh, a period of... Uh, and at the same time, we have a tremendously enhanced capability to provide for what would be called uh, life support of the species at a, at a level transcendent to what the masses have ever been let's, able to let's, do. Let's, let's a positive reading of the situation that is blowing in the wind is available to us in terms of the capability, but we have systems based upon the assumption there never has been, never can be enough for all. There never can be a world that would allow for there to be a just system for a mutually uh, 
uh, productive system for everybody within that system because it's thought of as unable to be uh, possible, and they retreat to a uh, real politic. Whoever's got the biggest club hits the other one on the head, and that's manifesting itself in the face of fascism or even things that are not even fasci openly fascistic. It's a okay. incredibly uh, okay. Uh, we, it, it is very clear. It is very clear. Yes. Since '45, mm. we are living in a very frightening world. But I would say so. But yeah. but we have been there now for quite a while. You know, yeah, it's so long. It's not like seventy three. Not in this uh, realm for sure, of two hundred thousand sure. years. Sure. We've been sure. here two hundred thousand years. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, so in in terms of two hundred thousand years, uh, seventy three years is not is not. Uh, 73 yeah. since uh, the atomic bomb uh, was dropped on Hiroshima. I'm trying to say it's a unique moment in evolutionary terms, not just okay. political terms. Okay, so let's look at it. We lived through the um, Cold War and we survived it. Yeah. Whew. Yes. Yeah. And, and now we have a problem. I'd say because so. Because. The Iranians, we believe, yeah. want to have an atomic bomb. And why we don't like it? Why we don't like it? Because we prefer them to be weak so we can walk over them. Well, look what so happened. So I actually look believe. What to actu Syria. Look what happened exactly. to Syria. Uh, exactly. Uh, it happened to Syria Iraq. because Syria didn't happen. And look what happened to Libya. I totally agree with you. Yeah. It happened to look, Syria. Make yourself uh, vulnerable and see what happens. Exactly. If you don't have your I shield. Total, I'm totally with you. Mm. So well, if I'm, it, not, I'm not if, with that. If I'm we, I know. Yeah. So if we really want world peace to be sustained. And as I said in the beginning, if Israel is the biggest enemy of world peace, well, the biggest danger, the one thing that we need is an Iranian bomb. Because uh, an Iranian bomb is the one thing that will deter America, France, Britain, who are actually op operating as an Israeli proxy military power. This is the story. This is the story, and I'm probably the only one who, uh, who, uh, who is brave enough to say it in front of camera. Very likely. And, uh, very likely. You and might and be, uh, probably it, it means it, that... Uh, it is yeah. all Quran. You know, you know? It, it isn't yeah. everybody's lips. <laughs> yeah. And this is the situation now. The audacity of Mr. Netanyahu, who is sitting on a huge arsenal of atomic bombs, <laughs> right. you know, it's to true. complain yeah. on another country in the region that refuses, allegedly, to be deterred, you know, is well, slightly they, funny. And in, this is something because I think that we are... They're a winner. They're a winner. They okay. can do what they bloody okay. well want to so do. So let me just give you an, a, a twist. Let me offer you a twist okay. on, Good, this, on this winner narrative mm -hmm. that you're referring to quite a lot. And, uh, and I think that it's very important. If I'm aggressive, if I'm a winner, if I'm a chosen knight, if I'm a dangerous chosen knight from chosen feudal knight, days, yeah, yeah, it's been like and that I've, for if, a long time. Listen, if, yeah. I, if I'm a, if I'm a, an obnoxious character, oh. I I will also see the world around me in the same terms. I would believe that you are probably the same. Mm. If I am aggressive, vicious towards you, if I do things behind your back, mm. I would assume that you would like to do the same thing to me. This, yeah, that's right. this, have yeah. this right. is called, you. You. This is you. called yeah. projection. Yeah, yeah, right. I attribute projection. my symptoms going on. to others. Going on Israelis yeah. Yeah. who are dreaming of dropping bombs and they never stop making, uh, you know, all those kind of little weapons and, and uh, put millions of Palestinians in open air prisons, yeah. in siege, they must believe that the Palestinians are as vicious as they happen to be. And maybe they now, have to have Palestinians now, to be able this, to have that mindset. This is 
a vicious or the world this is a vicious yeah. cycle yeah. this is a vicious cycle and there is no way out of it unless you listen to Jesus Christ Jesus Christ wow. identified identified this problem at the core of Hebrew identity or Israelite identity or whatever you want to call it and yeah, he said if you want widespread no, around the whole world for sure for sure the, for yeah, sure yeah for sure it's a universal Jesus understood that the only way mm -hmm. around it mm -hmm. is to turn the other cheek if you don't turn the other cheek we see an amplification of your fear the more fearful, the more aggressive you become. And this is exactly where Israel is. This is exactly where America, Britain and France are. This is where NATO is. This is why we throw more and more bombs on Arabs. The it more bombs we throw, the Ab more we are afraid that absolutely. they will react to us. Absolutely this is the core true. of terror. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Oh, you're right down. That's calling the shot the way it is, you know. And this suggests to me that the only way to resolve the situation is not political is spiritual we need spirit we oh, need we well, need a yeah, new okay. jesus christ uh -huh. and i only hope that it's not me no, <laughs> no i'm, I'm not have me. you had the test made have you no i tried i tried it to, yeah. with myself you, you know it was it was so painful yeah, man yeah, yeah. and i then i couldn't get yeah. it out of mm, it was mm, awful mm. <laughs> i think you may be spartacus you know maybe you know that's a different kind yeah. of thing no but it's this very, is why by the way yeah. this is why I, I i keep eating so much that mm. they won't be able to nail me to the cross you know they really need very strong oh stop <laughs> Boy, don't try to make it as a comedian. You do better as a political cut. But anyway, All right, sorry. but it's, you're laying out a very, very interesting situation and one that we have been for good or ill as a human society and of a certain age group and so forth right now is, a, is not a normal run-of-the-mill kind of time in history with a lot of, le of languidly uh, accepting ideas in a world which it is protected in its own innocence yep. of something like species lethality. I mean, that's, I don't think we've had that in our hands uh, uh, at all, but we do now, and it doesn't seem to be resonating. And also, more to the question is, what about the, uh, the you, you take an equation, you got one side of it and you got another side, uh, the, the lethality and the, the weapon systems and the exertion of power and realpolitik, the same old, uh, you know, ho house offer and all that kind of stuff. We've been arguing that forever or from Caesar's time or back before yeah. and everything. But that there is on the other side some sort of qualitative transformation in the material reality, one of which has been suggested by some of our peoples with all kinds of academic uh, assuredness and exempt that we have uh, capability of providing for the material needs or wants of the human society in a cornucopia way in terms we, of we always come we always come to this point you and, and i you mean or yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah yeah because we, 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 but because we, we, this, we have this the ability to transcend material scarcity as an ontological this reality is for the establishment of, pre this of is policy but we can't even <laughs> consider there could be a world where it could be taking care of everybody in a way that might be ob uh, okay. available to us so if we but make policy on the assumption that that is an ontologic reality new to this moment. Let, let, me, let, me, let, let me address it. Let okay. me address your point. And if you know, uh, 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 they in, philosophy, in philosophy, in metaphysical terms. Mm. So we probably I think that possess the, the, the capacity to provide for everyone everyone but no but human greed well, there is unlimited see. no no all right this is yeah but this is this that's such a and stupid this is thing that's also been proposed as an absolute that can't be questioned that is not true necessarily it is definitely the if case if there is enough if the, the whole premise is that there is the capability of providing for everyone in a way that would make them let's just say in a certain sense a have. There's never been but a few people as being haves in the history of the world. Cro Magnon fires. There was a. It was. A okay. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me be 
But we're very clear with you. We America, have trans, we have trans trans America, scarcity at the level of capability to provide life support for the entire let's, Homo let's, sapiens species. Let's leave this life support but for a second, say, be, be, because you have enough Americans who are living under bridges, you know, in yeah. one of the richest countries, probably the richest country in the in, in the, the world. world. I don't. It yeah, depends. Right, all right. right. Yeah. All right. I, I don't think that you are the richest country in the world. You know. Uh, but but uh, but but uh, it def it mat d depends how you, uh, you you measure richness. But let's look at it. America has been involved in so many conflicts in the last three decades. I'm not going to talk about Korea and Vietnam. In the last three decades, these wars are not wars that were called by the American people who were under any kind of threat. These You're are right. wars that were, w were launched to appease a very small and unique elite groups and you can talk about oil but i'm not so sure that it has something to do with oil because um, a very brief um, research will reveal to you that actually the oil companies are not very happy with this uh, with this with these wars they would prefer to see stability this is where, where when they know where where they're going where they make a kind of a, a calculations and uh, and they work as uh, properly as companies we are left with jewish pressure groups such as apac yeah, that's the, right. the LFI, the, the LFI, the LFI, Labor Friends of Israel at the time of yeah, uh, yeah, of yeah. Uh, of, uh, of really uh, powerful, Second yeah. uh, Gulf War. Now CFI, Conservative Friends of Israel, France. We are talking about the CRIF. Yeah. All right, these groups are identified. They don't hide their politics. They are pushing for more and more wars now. This, yeah. This, if you want to talk about our ability to provide for humanity, well, yeah. These wars, these wars are not even there to provide for Israel. Mm. It is there to provide for some very, uh, very unique lobbies, lobbies within the Zionist uh, universe and uh, this is uh, I must say very troubling for me it is very dangerous yeah. for the world as well as the Jews yeah, yeah. as well as the Jews yeah. Jews have enough um, holocausts to understand in their in the past to understand that these games are beyond Dangerous, and you don't think it's possible to ever have even modeling or anything of that sort predicated upon anything other than the ironclad law of the whole universe is that there can never be enough in political terms among the peoples of the world because it is in t inherently scarce. And the scarcity has to be the context within which all political decisions and planning decisions are made. It can never be done. It is done within individual situations, within individual settings and so forth. But it can't be done on the collective for the whole of the human society. I, Bucky uh, Fuller did the exact opposite of measuring that very thing and said we crossed the line along about 1970. Let's, when we uh, had let's, that let's, 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 it let's. It's never allowed to be answered because you said they're inherently greedy. Let's, let's, let, let, let me, let me, let me tell you something it's really, let me so. tell you something really, really stupid. There's a song. It ain't necessarily <laughs> so, so. You yeah, know that one? Good song. Yeah, yeah very good song. So simple. Yeah. Let mm. me tell you something uh, slightly, slightly stupid. Okay. Uh, and annoying. But no. unfortunately, <laughs> not for me. But 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 shot, un, uh, but shot. unfortunately, yeah. uh, this is a, a clear reading of the last American election. Oh. When it comes to Trump, mm -hmm. Trump wasn't elected to be your president because he had any record of proper political thinking. He was a completely new guy 
to this specific game. He knew how to play a new musical yeah, instrument. a new player. He knew how to play a musical he was, instrument called he Twitter. He was elected. He's a Twitter he was, president. He was ele- fine. Yeah. He was elected. He was elected to a m- because the American people collectively, but let's, let's say 25% of them, were frustrated. Yeah. yeah? So Trump is a symptom of collective fatigue. By the way, collective fatigue, we are talking just about 25% of the American people. 25? That the, much? Yeah, because, because it was 50% of the uh, participation and he kind of half of it. Are there any quarters where that is not something that causes fatigue, but causes really excitement about we can get on with getting into this? Now, uh, now, idea, it's now, called now, idealism now, and so now. Forth. So what I'm trying yeah. to tell you, what I'm trying to tell you, mm-hmm. we can see, we have seen it in history, that people are operating together. I think that the message, what we take from Trump, is that there is enough power in America, in Britain after Brexit, in France, in Hungary, in Germany, there is enough power, conviction to keep in the, the game people, going. in the people, no, no, to bring a change, to bring a change. However, as it's we learn from the Trump, old paradigm, as not we learn from in the, from the case of Trump, mm-hmm. we don't know what change this. No, but you know what it's kind a proje- of change it's this a projection, may appear. The same old story of James Joyce had Dedalus say. He said, "History is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken." And the one thing that you want to insist is there can never be an awakening to something other than history being a, and current uh, reality being of... Uh, okay, good, 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 good. Thanks, dear. Yeah, so anyway, I'm, I'm ju- we're just off on the same sort of thing here. But I'm of the opinion that we're coming into a new era, and when you come to a new era, people are going to be protecting the established system that they're familiar with. It's been 10,000 generations, and it's time for us to make a transition in our political and economic and social One thing that you have to remember. In view of the realities one of, one thing that you, themselves. One thing that you have to remember. At the level when of you, when, when, you, when, when you come to these issues, mm. the conditions, the technologies, the universe around us. Amazingly. It, Changes a lot all the time, yeah. but the no, human, but the human, it's going exponentially for sure. now. But the human condition mm-hmm. doesn't change. Well, I don't think that. And this well, is, okay. and this is the human condition is something well, that we are carrying for quite a while. Yeah, we are essentially two hundred thousand years, exactly. roughly ten thousand exactly. generations. We've exactly, we're living in a condition exactly. that we are exactly. not going to let go of easily. You know, even and if the, an and, and this. Is it's grow up time in planet Earth, you know, yeah. and and it, mm. uh, are you optimistic, pessimistic for the human prospect? I'm very optimistic. You are out totally. Of all this, he's very optimistic. Yeah. Well, you've heard it here, for folks, and it looks like we've come to the end of the world. It's Gilad Otsman. We didn't even get to the fact he plays. He plays the he plays the saxophone like Charlie Parker. I mean, <laughs> and he, I mean, and I'm here to testify. Are you going to get? Are you going to be doing any playing while you're in town? Um, not in this town. Oh, shucks, that's our yeah. loss, you know. But anyway, he's got it. some ideas <laughs> on politics. Glad to have had you had a chance to do it. Uh, uh, welcome to New York again. Uh, this got to be thought of as a home base or third base, anyway, for your touring around the world and everything. Good to see Apparently. you again. Nice one. Great your to see you in good shape. Your pleasure his perceptions. We'll be coming back tomorrow. Thank you very much for viewing. And um, so uh, that's, I guess that's about it. Okay, thank you for viewing.